It's A to B, baby. It's A to it's, B. See, he can't hear you. You can't. She can't hear you, but it is A to B. A to B with Antron Brown. Antron's been a little while since we had you on the Racing Nuts Radio Network. A lot happening in your life. We're geared up and getting ready to go racing. Heck, you've been racing all along with your kiddos, right? Oh, I have been, man. Steve, I've been going crazy, man. But you know what? We we got some good things going. You see me right now. I'm actually soldering and putting some coils together. You see what Look I mean? Look at you, so, man. So uh, I'm soldering wires right now. I'm doing a little bit of everything. I'm in my own home personal shop, man. The, the AB Speed Shop. <laughs> so, the AB Speed Shop. That's pretty yeah, cool. So, we're having some fun, man. I'm always doing something, but yeah, I mean, I've been junior tracks racing with the kiddos and my son Anton has came off a race win last week and won eight rounds and win at the Midwest Junior Super Series of Lucas Oil Protect the Harvest Midwest Junior Super Series, man. It was a, it was a good outing. And where's that at? Of fun. That was in Martin, Michigan at US 131. Ooh. And uh, it was, it was a lot of fun, man. It was a lot of stiff competition out there. And it was the best of the best, man, you know? Well, we were talking a little bit before we got started, and Anson started when he was eight years old. Your kid's been in it for a while, almost seven yeah, years he, now. He has been, man, and, and that's what makes the sport so good is because he's growing up in the sport, you know what right? I mean? Yeah. And, and that's the coolest part about it, to be honest with you, is that he's learning a lot of great life lessons. I mean, the competition stiff. He's learning how to – cater to the sponsors because he's got sponsors on his car cool. that he that i make him responsible for right which is a good thing man because teach him young you gotta teach him young and uh and he's learning a lot of great deals on how to carry yourself conduct yourself that you can't do the same things you can't you can't be out there acting a fool because <laughs> everybody's got their eyes all over you you know what i mean that's, and, that's exactly right and uh but He's, he does real good. I'm proud of him, man. I'm proud of the young man he's becoming. You know, we went through our bumps and bruises. He made some mistakes along the way, but we grew we all from did. him. You know, we grew, and, he, he grew from him. How about Adler? How's he doing? He's doing good, man. He's actually starting to take in the racing. Before Adler, I never knew if he was going to like racing or not, but he actually does. He's getting more and more involved in it, and he's getting a lot better at it, man. He was uh, – Brother, at the moment, I didn't think he was going to be a drag racer because he wasn't really worried about drag racing, you know. But Well, you know, they yeah. got to go through the phase of Pokemon and the different things the kids want to do. Adler's 12 years old. He's been racing since he was six. Six years behind the wheel already. Uh, your kids are growing up in, in, in daddy's footsteps. That's awesome. Yeah, he's just finally, Adler's just finally starting to get serious about it. You know what I mean? So right. that that's that's the good part about it. I have a lot of fun with him. And man, and we just, and you know, I like, I just like the way they grow from it and they use it in their everyday life as, right. as a learning curve. You know what I mean? They know that they have to put the work in to get the mm -hmm. results. And that's Absolutely. what he does. Absolutely. Um, you know, listen, we only, we started the, the NHRA season. We only got two races in first one. You went out in the second round uh, in, in Pomona. The second one was Arizona. You did pretty good. Um, we're getting ready to start back up again. That's why we got you back on the phone. We wanted to, but you, you, you really, I think that you've got your, uh, your COVID beard there. We're going to have to get rid of the scruffy over there. Oh, that know. comes right, that comes right off. Man. You're like, shh, 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 shh. There you Boom. go. It's going to be off and gone. Hey, I'm going to go from looking, I'm going to go looking from looking like, uh, like late thirties. Uh -huh. Bam. Right to looking 20 again. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you got it going on. So we're getting ready to go uh, to Indy. You got two dates in a row. I think you guys are taking after what NASCAR has done with doing like two dates, you know, two weekends in a row at the same track and uh, try to catch up with the points and all this stuff. And how are you looking? I know you've been over to the shop uh, working around and messing around. How's everything looking? Everything's looking good, man. We've got a lot of stuff happening. It's a lot of things that's out on the horizon right now. Huh? And, uh, we got some cool things that's coming up the pike that's going to excite everybody, man. We got some cool stuff happening that I can't talk about. I know, and I spoke yet. to somebody. I spoke to somebody about it today, and I can't talk about it either. So we're just going to uh, leave. Out of Actually, uh, the uh, the 10th and the 11th of July will be the first race for the NHRA to kick back off their season after this uh, uh, dry spell of not being able to race for the first time ever in NHRA history. Uh, and you're going back to a place that you really like, Indy, right? Oh, yeah. I love going to Indy, and uh, it's going to be very interesting because it's only going to be a two-qualifying format on Saturday. 
Okay. And we're going to get after it on That's quick. Sunday with racing. And it's going to be an early start on Sunday because it's going to be live television Woo. on the Fox network, man. So That's awesome. there's a lot of good things happening right now, man. That's uh, it's pretty awesome, man. It's like, I'm, 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 I'm definitely ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm hyped. I'm hyped up, amped up. And it's time to get going, my man. It's time to get going and, and I'm ready to go. Well, the week, very, the very next week after that, after the 10th and the 11th of July, will be the 18th and 19th. You go right back to the same place. I guess you're going to hang out there for the week, and uh, you'll be right back in Indy for another race, back to back. Well, I, I live here in Indy, man. I live here in Indy, so uh, I, that's I'm, the fun part. I live here, so that ain't no changing. It's like that's part of it right now. Are there other yeah. tracks you're going to go two weekends in a row like that? Uh, no, this is the only track we're going to go two weekends in a row like that to start the season off. Because one thing is all the race teams are pretty much based out of here, out of Indy. Right. You know what I mean? So that's what really, really helps it. You know what I mean? Is that is that we're all based out. Most of us are based out of here. We don't have to get hotels. Everybody can stay at home. So there won't be no hotel bills or anything like that's that. That's cool. So that makes it a lot nicer, man. A right. lot nicer, you know. And how about the fans? Are they going to have fans and everything there? I mean, that's one of the questions everybody's asking. Uh, there are going to have fans there. It's going to be open right. fans. I don't know how NHRA is doing it just yet. I think a I percentage. All the particulars. I think what happens is, is that if you already have tickets to the U.S. Nationals, you'll get a discounted ticket to come to this race because they definitely want everybody to still go to the U.S. Nationals. So I don't know how they're going to actually work all that yet. Yeah. I'll be lying to you if I told you this is what it is or this is what that is. You know what I mean? So it changes. Just, it changes it, it all changes. the time. It does. So, but it is definitely going to be open to fans. Killer. And by that time, I believe July 4th is the 100% opening for yep. Indiana, where everything's going to be 100% fully open. So, our race is not till July 10th, which is on a Saturday and Sunday. So, I believe we can have fans. I don't know how many fans they can have, but right. it, it's going to, I mean, Indy's a big place. When you go yeah. to the U.S. Nationals, there's a lot of acreage, brother. There's plenty of room. For everybody to sit in the stands and to walk around without being like up on each other. So right, so there's plenty so, of space to social distance and all that. Absolutely. So we should That's be good. We should be okay. good. Okay. Well, we got a stack of tickets. Hold on one second. Let me show you. Look, this is the remainers of the tickets for the Gator Nationals. Oh, I mean, okay. We did not give them all out. We we I, were close to getting ready, and we were almost there. And we were almost there for that weekend, but we still had a, a week or so to go. And we still have all these tickets. Matter of fact, I got this big of a stack of tickets for Homestead. And Homestead is this weekend for the next really? so I have all. Now? So I, what are we going to do? Are we giving them out? Or what I can't, are we I can't give them out. It? No, I can't give them out. And that's the whole problem. This is like my cachet of tickets that were supposed to go out on the air. And we did give away quite a few tickets on the air uh, for the uh, Gainesville Gator Nationals. Now, you know, Gainesville is going to be back in September and, uh, and we're going to try it. We're going to try our hardest to, to get with uh, NHRA and make sure we can get some more of these tickets and make sure that the ones that we've uh, given away to all the fans down here in Florida, that these tickets are still good. So oh, I still got a stack. Gonna, they're going to still be good. Trust me. Cause we're coming to Gainesville. When, when do they have us coming to Gainesville? I think it's September got, 24th, something like that, I believe. Yeah, it, I mean, the weather should be phenomenal, man, because it's yeah. going to be the break. The, nice well, the break. It's going to be on the breaking point of fall. No, it'll be hot. Just, it'll huh? be hot. It'll be hot. It'll I, be, I live in Florida. It'll still be hot. It'll still be hot in September. Oh, yeah. In, sticky, in, sticky. Hot. In, in Gainesville? Oh, yeah. Maybe a little man. cooler at night, but it'll still be hot in the daytime, probably around mid-80s, upper 80s. Oh, Every day. That's, a, that's all right. I, I can deal with that. I can deal with that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Air conditioning RV, you'll be all right. <laughs> oh, man, I'm out, I'm out amongst the masses, brother. Listen, we're going to be out there in the Midway, I believe, and uh, we're going to do a live show out there for all the fans on uh, in Florida, and uh, you'll be part of that at the same time. We can't wait to get there and do that and um, and, and go to the Gainesville Gator Nationals. It's like one of the best races of the season. And you, we were talking before we came on the air about the U.S. Nationals being uh, – what is that, Labor Day weekend? Labor Day weekend is going to be a three-day race, too, because what you got to remember is all of our races right now are two-day races. Uh -huh. They're all two-day races, like Saturday and Sunday, just to be making a lot of people easier on travel and uh, save some people the money and help the race team survive 
so we, you know, we can get through this year and get to next year. You know what I mean? Cool. And, um, and, you know, honestly, I think some of our races will be good at being just two races, you know what I mean? But mm-hmm. some of them, like when we race Denver, Colorado, right, that, my, definitely, my. that definitely needs to be a three day race because that place is packed all three days. Like awesome. every same thing with Infineon Raceway <laughs> up there in uh, Sonoma, that right. racetrack is packed all three days. Like, you know, you got U.S. Nationals is packed every day. Like, you know, when we go to U.S. Nationals here in Indy, that's another racetrack that's always packed. You know what I mean? So, well, I heard some stories about that track over there, and they have some kind of like a, a, a place where everybody does camping out and all that stuff. It's that crazy, like a zoo or something they call it. I'm, I'm not oh, sure. That's in, that's in Brainerd. That's, that's in Brainerd. Brainerd. Okay. Brainerd, that's why Minnesota. I that is the zoo. In Brainerd, <laughs> that Tell me a little bit zoo. about the zoo without going too far because we're, we're getting short well, on time here. But well, tell me zoo, about the zoo a little bit. Well, the zoo is like, you know, all these people like, you know, from Canada, Minnesota, Wisconsin, they all come up to this race and they always, this is what they save their whole vacation for. Right? They're up there for a week straight before we even get there, oh. out there just camping out. Having, Partying. And just having a good time. They're That's just awesome. having a good time unwinding, enjoying their self. That's what that's what it's all about, you know what Heck I mean. Yeah. So, so that's what it all boils down to. And I enjoy going up there every year, you know. But uh, yes. most important, I know one thing is that uh, you know that's what I always tell people. What's one thing about our sport in HRA drag race? So we all come together, Absolutely. and we're one, we're together as a family, man. And uh, that's one thing I really, really admire about our sport and about our fans. You know what I mean? Like Absolutely. we're one we're one family that support one another. And I always feel welcome every time I've come to a, an HRA, an HRA race, even as a fan. Before I started doing radio, uh, you guys always welcomed all of us, and you do. Even the fans get up, up close and personal and get to take pictures with you guys and get you guys to autograph things. And that's a big difference between you guys and other series of motorsports. Now, let's go into the other series of motorsports. You being like the, the only one of the uh, black drivers in the HRA – and all the stuff happening in NASCAR, my emails have been blowing up nonstop with all this craziness about Confederate flags and distancing each other and going crazy. And, you know, I, I, I wanted to get your take on that. Now, I know we already spoke about it before we came on the air. We and you have the same exact take. But what would you tell the fans out there that are kind of upset about this and that? And, uh, you know, they, they have their own opinions. Everybody's going to have that. But uh, you had the best, the best way to, to put it into words. And I wanted you to just to say it for us. Well, one thing, first thing first, you know what I mean, is, is my opinion, I mean, I love our country and I love our, I love our American flag on what it stands for. You know what I mean? Absolutely. When I mm-hmm. look at that flag is one thing is the home of the brave, the land Man. of the free. Okay. And when I say, when I go, always go up there and I see the national anthem playing, my hands just like this, brother. Yep. My right hand is right over here over top of my heart because that's the love that I have for this whole country and all the men and women that served it. And, you know, being, you know, part of the U.S. Army for all these years. And uh, that's just where my heart and soul is, man. And uh, Me too. I think, I think one thing is, is that instead of everything that's happening today, all it's happening is is taking us back and is dividing everybody. Right. And it's it's opening up a wound that was always there. You know what I mean? And all they're doing is reopening it. Like we made so many steps forward and now we're making so many steps back. And Doesn't make any sense. No, and I think that what we need to do is we need to be talking about things about being together. Right. And loving. And love is outweighs them all. And it's you're and right. I'm a Christian man. Me too. And a Bible. What overcomes everything in the Bible is love. Absolutely. Love, love, love. That's and you right. can't fight hate with hate. You only can fight hate with love. Love. And, uh, and that's how I feel about it, brother. And that's when great. I go like this or I go like this, this is all of our hands together as one. I don't care where you come from, what background you come from. And that's how we get through this. We get through this together. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not divided, but together. Absolutely. And, uh, and and thing about it is, is that we just need to keep moving forward, not looking what happened in the past, but what can we make happen in the, in the future? future? Amen. You know, you know that's I mean? that's why that's why I wanted to ask you the question because 
me and you were on the same page. I'm ex-military, and I don't see race and all those things. And I know that I'm a Christian at the same time. And like you said, love is the only thing that overcomes all this craziness and hate. That's the only thing that can overcome it all. And so we were on the same page. And, you know, everybody was telling me from radio stations to, to all the other stuff that I do, you can't talk about that. But I believe in the way that, that we discussed it just now, it's just a beautiful thing to be able to talk about it in the proper way. Absolutely. And, you know, and everybody has their take on it, too. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and, and the sad part is there is still stuff that goes on in yes. this world today where people see people and they, and they prejudge them. There's people that just have hatred in their heart. They're not filled with love and compassion. Mm -hmm. And we just need to cancel that. We got to cancel right. it by just loving it and, and say it's all right because you're not going to get me to get on that same plane. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna stay on my plane, and I'm gonna try to maybe educate some of them and bring them up where they're on the same plane. And you right. know what I mean, like that's awesome, brother. And and that's what it's all about, man. It's not. It's not for any of us to judge one another. It's for the man upstairs to judge, and we just gotta be on the same plane, brother, and okay. just and love one another. If now, if a if a person, I always say this: if a person's a knucklehead, you're just a knucklehead. You know what I mean? <laughs> And nothing yeah. you can do about it. You know That's what I right. mean? And sometimes you can't change people, no. but don't let them hold you down. And hold you and, hostage to their feelings. And, I, and, and right. this is one thing, Steve, I can always say is that my great grandmom, God bless her soul, who's passed away, she was half African American and half Native American Indian, Lenai Nape Indian. Mm -hmm. My grandmom, Gertie, she died, she literally died when she was, uh, when she was like 90 like 97 years old, and uh, she saw a lot. She was born in 1913. Wow. She's been through a lot, bro. Yep. And, and I never forget my grandma telling me some things. She goes, Antron, never walk through this world with a chip on your shoulder. She goes, I've been through things, and my mom and dad's been through things, but we've been through all these things and went through all these things so the world could be where it's at now. And you're going to go through some and you're going to go nice. through some things, but you keep on going through the things and don't let it slow you down or hold you down. Like, right. You know what I mean? And, and she goes, enjoy the freedoms you have and take advantage of it and rise. And she's and she always told me to rise above, rise mm -hmm. above the nonsense, because that's what we have a lot of going on is nonsense. Rise above yep. it and bring <laughs> others with you and enjoy what you have. Don't exactly. start on what I went through. I went through what I went through, so you will have what you have today. And then exactly. do the same thing for your children, and your children do the same thing for their children. And one day, this will be something that you just read in the history books that you won't even never bring it up again. That's right. And, and every generation gets better and better, and that's all we can all, ever hope for is that. We learn from the mistakes, and uh, we learn from a wise woman like your granny. And uh, we move on with our lives and uh, and make it a better place to be. Absolutely. Love, brother. Love. Absolutely. Them all. Love See, that, them all. that's the wisdom of Solomon coming right here from Mr. Antron Brown. That's why you're the loose nut behind the wheel. I'm the loose nut behind the mic. I knew exactly <laughs> what to ask you. I knew exactly what to ask you. And it came out well. And uh, nobody could ever be offended by those words. That's awesome. No, no. Just, you just got to speak from the heart and speak how you feel. That's all Absolutely. it is, man. Absolutely. Well, That's good luck with getting ready to race, and uh, we'll check in with you every week now, and we'll get back on this thing with the A to, A to B with Antron Brown. We want to we want to give you a little bit of space, and uh, you, you'll uh, you'll get rid of the COVID beard, and uh, we'll be able to yeah. move forward. <laughs> we'll be able to move forward and, uh, and <laughs> keep in touch with you. We'll see how Adler and Anson does uh, this weekend. Were they racing again? We're just racing out over here at Lucas Oil Raceway Park, man. Okay. Over at Indy this week, it's a normal bracket race, and they race juniors. And and as you see, I'm just doing getting some calls up, man. I'm getting them all together, my man. It's it's a it's a work of love. And if you put yes, your hands to if you put your hands to it, actually they can't go wrong if Dad's there taking care of business and getting it all souped up and ready to go. Now you ain't, uh, you, ain't yeah. got no, you ain't got no cheater parts in there, do you? No, man. I want to make sure. I want to make hey, sure. No, hey, ain't no cheating, brother. Ain't no cheating, man. Ain't, ain't no, no cheating. cheating. Let's get caught. Making, I'm sorry. It, making it, making it right, <laughs> making it tight. There you go. A to B with Antron Brown. Antron, thanks so much for your time, brother. And uh, 
I'll tell you what, the wisdom that you gave out was incredible, and we appreciate it. And we'll check in with you next week. Good luck. All right, brother. Peace and love, man. Love you, brother. Good good luck. Thanks for having me on, man. All right. Thanks a lot, Antron. You're the best. All right. Take care. All right, babe.